I'm from Colombia. Okay, me too. <laughs> I'm from Pakistan and Karachi. So, um, I'm from India, but I was born in Abu Dhabi. I have like a mixed background, so all of my relatives were actually immigrants to Argentina. I was born in Saudi Arabia. I am from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm from Kosovo. Um, it's the people there are Albanian and we gained independence in 2008. Mm. And uh, we're just a little country in Europe beside Croatia and Albania and maybe more known countries like that. I am from Canada, born and raised, but I'm originally from Somalia. I was born in Delhi and I came here when I was seven years old. I'm from Hong Kong. I'm from Bulgaria, Sofia, which is the capital. I'm half Tunisian, half Bahraini. When did you come uh, to Toronto? I came when I was seven, oh, so man. like pretty young. What about yeah. you? Um, when I was 18. Oh my gosh, it's so recent. Yeah. You've been here for a while, right? Yeah, I've been here for okay. 18, 17, 18 years. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. What about you? A few months. Que tan duro te dio venir acá? I don't see it then. How hard was it for you to come? It's like at seven. I don't know how to explain it. Like it wasn't difficult, I think, because I didn't realize what was happening. Mm. So it's like it was just a really big change. But when I look back at it, I really saw a lot of difficulty, especially with mm. el lenguaje and la cultura. Because mm -hmm. it's very cold here. Yeah. While like over there it's very warm and everyone's very welcoming. Yeah. So I think for me personally, like it grew me to the person I am today because I was bullied like because of your accent mm. and the way you dress and your family, especially like la comida, like because sí. la comida is so different, right? Todavía me da, eso es lo que más duro me da. Pues entre sí. extrañar la familia, yeah. los amigos, la comida es yo digo, algo totalmente... Yeah. Yo digo que yo extraño más la comida que mi familia. <laughs> When, when people ask where I'm from, I'll say Tanzania. Mm -hmm. But as I've gotten older and I've moved around, I think it's easier to say where I'm a local of. So I was born in England. I grew up in Tanzania and now I live in Canada. Toronto might start becoming my home because yeah. like I kind of relate to this like everyone's from everywhere sort mm -hmm. of thing. And this is a place where everyone can like say that and not feel like, oh, I'm not like from one place. Yeah, I think I see myself as uh, more than just a student. I've, um, uh, you know, been able to integrate myself into uh, the OK community fairly well. I've got like different groups of friends. Well, I think um, like although it's so diverse here, but I still feel like I'm still uh, friends with more people who are from like from Pakistan or India who I actually uh, I can relate with. I'd like to think I'm more than a student here. Um, in the past three years, I've just felt like a student because I've been so detached from the OCAD community and um, like not joining any clubs or not having enough clubs to be interested in them. Even as a graphic designer, there's a lot of help, there's a lot of interacting with your work. And on a larger scale, there's this feeling of everyone comes in, they do their own thing, and then yeah. you go on to do the next thing. I think that's, that's something that um, a lot of people do it's realize how powerful um how much value there is in community mm -hmm. um i guess i would say if there's anything that okad can work a little bit harder on is building a community here because they're already at a, at a disadvantage with no um residents mm -hmm. right so when people just finish their studies they go home yeah, yeah. right and people are living <clears throat> uh hour away to two hours away on kind of like on average if they don't have the the finances to, to get an apartment nearby, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? So um, they're really missing, not not completely missing, the foundation, but, um, like a grounding. Yeah, like like a like a like a place or like a, a system for us to learn from each other. I think that any kind of learning in the community that happens here at Ocad is kind of like by accident. I'm, I'm like a cultural nomad kind of person. I don't even know where I belong. You guys are synonymous with carnival. Kind of yeah, basically. <laughs> and <laughs> no, one more thing, you guys are uh, sort of music too. 
Soka. Soka music. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You guys are, that's what you're synonymous. Yeah, it's cool to let you know. <laughs> Personally, like I am really attached to like just the Somali community and like this, like my Africanness as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think uh, um, my cultural tradition would be there's an importance on tea and conversation with tea. Yeah, like um, sitting down with someone and having tea. It's not so much about the tea, it's the, f the moment that you'll share with them, the conversation okay. and stuff. I've actually, um, had a, I've actually experienced um, that culture because I think England Yeah, actually, it's it's like very a, a, yeah, a, a yeah very similar, exactly. It's a very similar culture. It's like, oh, you had a bad day, oh, have some tea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have a headache, oh, have some tea. It's like, like you know, oh, you had a good day, oh, have some tea. It's like, it's the solution for everything. Yeah. Tea is the cure. Yeah. 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 I, I, I will just have any moments where I just suddenly feel a little homesick and I'm like, I think I'm going to go to the Indian food fair. I think uh, I like to uh, incorporate some of my traditional or cultural dresses into my uh, like normal dressing. It makes me slightly conscious. Um, uh, like if I put it on, it's like, yeah, I'm representing who I am back home, but over here, people look at you and work. That's a little strange. I'm like, yeah, but that's where I'm from. But at the same time, it's a bit... Uh, it draws attention. I observe the cultural um, idea of acknowledging the land. And this is important to me because ever since I was a kid, I realized that our land, like wherever we are, is like what's taking us to the next level, right? So I believe land acknowledgement is a really important tradition and um, culturally it's out of respect as well for my great grandmother who was indigenous to Canada and uh, I feel that like this kind of observation is one that you can practice daily or you can practice like once in a while but it's like really good when it starts to become a daily practice because it makes you aware of where you are at all times and it makes you realize like that the earth is part of our lives like every day. No, absolutely not. Um, I don't think so at least. Uh, I mean the community is there and uh, but when it comes to like one of the things that slightly pissed me off when I first joined uh, OCAD was because my first language is English and I've always spoken English since I was a kid but as soon as I came here they're like oh you're an international student where are you from? I'm like uh, I'm, I'm from India and they're like your English is really good I was like and but like there's a stereotype that needs to be like taken away from but at the same time um, the like I feel like the community probably isn't represented well enough to break that stereotype. Like they kind of touch on it like, oh here's like Orientalism and like the other yeah. and stuff. It's 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 like a an hour. Mm. That's it. You yeah, know, in, just in like, your general how, history like, class. Yeah. This is like how your culture affected mm -hmm. ours when it's like should be And it and it goes beyond OCAD too. It's not yeah. just OCAD. It's mm -hmm. art history in general. It's how much we've collected on other countries. Yeah. Like I I understand that, but an effort towards showing that OCAD is a global school, mm -hmm. that they are creating these global designers and artists, that's a step towards that. We can't just be Eurocentric exactly. in terms of what we learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah like different cultures are going to see colors differently. And mm -hmm. my culture, blue, is like the color. Right. Everything must be in blue. The colors that represent something in like America or in Canada don't necessarily represent the same thing in Saudi Arabia or Pakistan mm -hmm. or, you know, like anywhere right. else. People have that, I guess, like part of their brain is just like there's like a little box for stereotypes, well, and it's almost like everyone has boxes. it. But it's just like you almost need to know that border, you know, like just like yeah, people really are kind of self-conscious line. and people do care about those things, and it's such a huge part of you, like you being from Hong Kong, it's. It's yeah, like a huge part of you. Like assume if people I'm from China, which I don't exactly. know how to explain Exactly, it's exactly that the same thing. Literally the same thing. You should want to know. Mm -hmm. Like you should be interested in like a culture that's not your own. Because this is a city and a school where like we're trying to like invite you know everyone. It's like if you're not worried about it, if you're not, if you're not concerned, then it's like that's the problem. It's not like yeah. it's not the content. It's like 
where where is that like part of you that like wants to be interested in this? Like, it's also really funny because if you ask a lot of us what our goals are in life, one of them is always to travel. Yeah. And I find it so ironic that you have all these options and all this this, this ability to learn about places that you could potentially visit yeah. and have someone to show you around if yeah, you ever exactly. got to go there and there's there's this lack of interest and yeah sometimes you can bring up your culture and it'll just be like mm -hmm. no we're good yeah so, as long as let's talk good. about something else i've actually had someone be like so on a serious note wow yeah wow. yeah isn't this school supposed to be preparing us for a global market? Exactly. And not just with advertising and things like that and graphic design as well. When you're making things, you have to be aware of those things. Because, like, what mm -hmm. if, like, one of these colors that you use is, like, like, offensive to somebody, you know? Like, how do you cater to that? And I feel like people have that awareness, but, like, the whole, like, make sure not to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. But it's always make sure not to offend anybody in Canada and America. I feel like the question of culture is kind of bigger than just like vocab. It's like, you know, we're in a place that's called Canada, but we're, we're also in the territory of the Mississauga. And that for me is like controversial because it's actually two places in one. And most people call it Canada, but we are actually in an indigenous land as well, right? And I feel like I feel like there's still like maybe um, some work that needs to happen around how to accept diversity. Like there's conversations that need to happen in, in order to maybe promote more visibility. A silly one, for example, um, growing up, when, um, you know, like, uh, cutting your nails with the nail clipper. Mm -hmm. So my mom would say that doing that at night, when I was younger, <laughs> would bring a witch to our house. <laughs> I'm gonna look at the fourth one for this. Yeah, so like, I found that ridiculous, wow. ridiculous, uh, ridiculous, but I think I can see why they were doing it for kids and the value that it brought. Oh, it's not just that simple story about the witch and it's ridiculous, it's, it's about um, hygiene and self-help and yeah. keeping one I don't know what it relates to the witch in that night, but <laughs> I can see the, the point of that. Man. Okay, so I came here when I was seven. So I did, I, I pretty much grew up here and I know about Western culture. And I'm not too connected with um, my Indian heritage. Like, I know I wear a turban well, but I'm not too religious. And um, I was thinking about this. It, like, am I really going to carry on my family traditions? Like, it's, I don't know, it's like a weird question. Um, and, uh, like I, I don't because I've been so involved in the Western culture, like I picked up my own, I want to say traditions, and kind of implemented them in my life. So now it's like the tradition that I have for my family. I don't know if I'm like, will I pass yeah. them on? Yeah. Right. And uh, it's interesting because I do connect with some of the stories, and some of the stories I don't because. Um, like Western culture has me thinking about, um, it has me thinking more critically. Like I really want to tell you a story, but I'm not even sure what exactly. It's like, like such a huge picture and it's something that is ha what's happening like let's say Christmas every year. That I can tell you like how the day would go, but I can't even like, like those li like little stories that make the actual thing. Yeah, it's like I was right there, so it's almost like it You're part just, of the story. I was part of it, so I never really thought about it that deeply. I wish I, I did. My grandparents and my mother, my dad too, they always almost boast about how beautiful it is when they were growing up. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, we would go to the river, to the rio. Yeah. Y los bañamos. And we didn't have to worry about that. And it would be so clean and it'd be so beautiful. And the paisajes and everything, yeah. right? And you know, it's nice that I'm hearing this, but for me, like, personally, it's like, I'm gonna swear, I fucking get mad. Because it's like, you had that opportunity of living in such a nice, sustainable environment. You had that opportunity where your last worry was, where is the environment going? Hmm. What is happening to the carbon dioxide happening? Hmm. Why is there deforestation happening? Why are the animals dying? That was your last worry. For me, growing up, that was my first worry. Mm -hmm. Do I have a future in this earth? 
what is going on to my environment why are we killing our environment so you know it's i guess from what i get from them is maybe like a rage but also a want to change our environment mm -hmm. if my parent that is so unfair that my grandparents and my parents could live in that and i can't in our family interacting with other people and learning about another culture and immersing yourself in another culture mm -hmm. is probably the highest form of education in our family. Mm -hmm. There is nothing better than learning about another place because ultimately we're interacting with people. I feel like we live, I live as an imposed culture, like I haven't been in Pakistan while I grew up, but all the things and cultural things they do there, my parents have instilled those values in me. So like that's the kind of thing that I carry with myself and like, I guess my daily life or like just me in general but when I think of like associating myself with that kind of, with all the people there I feel a little almost like unwelcomed in the sense because I haven't physically lived there do you know what I'm saying so I have the like the hard copy like passport but I don't have like the whole experience of living there A poem by uh, Mahmoud Darwish, a Palestinian poet, and it goes like "Kullu qulub al-nas jinsiyati, faltusqatu anni jawaz al-safar." And the translation for that is that um, the hearts of the people is my are in my nationality. Um, so let me free of the passport. Sometimes you just say Ukraine to sum it up but it's not the full story it's just sad that like when you're outside of your country like your home country the image that people have of that country it's so different from your own so it's kind of like ignoring what the reality of the whole culture is because no culture is like just the positive thing it also kind of like validates my experiences because you know like i don't want to like i feel like i'm not the only one that feels like how I feel. Like there'll be like, oh, well, there's students from here, over 62 countries and stuff like that. But there's nothing like an international day or like a festival or anything like that, that kind of like, you know, encourages people who are from different countries to embrace their like normal culture, their tradition, their clothes, their food, anything like that. We have international students. Like imagine having a different perspective from different like people who live across the world. That is such a privilege to be able to be with an international student and get their direction and get their help. Um, so that's what's aided, like, aided me. Anytime people are asking each other about their cultures or trying to learn more about each other, I feel like that line is starting to be crossed and we're trying to get rid of that border. We're erasing that border more and more. It could be OCAD's responsibility to try to help uh, international students or, or not even like people who have who kind of spend more time away make them feel a bit more comfortable when they when they get here it's like oh my god this is an actual issue like this is something that is going on and or it's actually not going on because <laughs> we're talking about community we're talking about collaboration we're talking about exchanging traditions and uh those cultural parts of ourselves but yeah I've, i never really it was something that I was taking for granted, that everybody's from somewhere else, uh, but no reflection whatsoever. So it definitely affected me in a way that I started consciously thinking about it. It's really good to take a break out of your day and reflect and meet people who have similar experiences and very different experiences. Do you want to be part of something or do you want to be just, you know, do you want to play a big role or do you want to be, you know, play a smaller role? I think it's an important project. Even just the title of the project is really important because the kaleidoscope is actually a triangle which reflects all sides and it reflects all the colors, like it reflects all the light into itself and kind of like brings like light into like a perspective kind of and um, it has many different sides and it creates many different shapes and many different patterns and I think that's really beautiful. I think also it's good to have a Jewish voice in this project. A lot of times um, 
we're kind of on this border of people of color and people of power. It made me realize that, you know, you being as an individual, you're not going to be that effective, you know? And that's, I think that's what the project is. If, if it was just one of you guys, I don't think it would be effective. I think you needed everybody. We're more focused on ourselves than on like a bigger picture. Um, you know, everyone tells you like to work on yourself and then figure that out. And I feel like for, for me, balance is what is the answer. So you work on yourself, of course, but you also work on a bigger picture and you ask yourself the hard question. I think that a lot of us, we discuss a lot. We discuss what's going on. We discuss the things we dislike that are happening around OCAD, but rarely do we see action. And I'm also at fault for that. It's something that we all do. And so for me, this being a part of this is action. It's speaking to people. It's going beyond my pe the people that I interact with on a daily basis. This is me, you know, basically calling out to other people, telling them if you've got an issue, that some, there's something that you dislike, you don't, you're not happy with around OCAD, do something about it.